this shop is one of my favorites. Actually, it looks like I got one bad frame in there. The so track, tracking this thing was crazy. Was it actually green or? It was actually green. Okay. Yeah, no, when this plate was filmed, it was. That's that's what I had to work with. So I had to track all the corners and then composite the What are you tracking with Blender? Mm -hmm. This one, I actually ran into a, an interesting problem with the corner tracking that was built into Blender. Whereas right now, if you use the corner tracking function, if one of the corners gets lost, you can't keyframe and interpolate frames. You can't say, okay, it was this feature was visible on frame 100, but was occluded from 100 to 110. So you go to 110 and you continue it there. Those 10 frames, you have to manually place it for each frame. You can't be like, all right, frame 105, let's move it here and then extrapolate it. No, it doesn't do that. Should yell at <laughs> I'll yell at somebody. Um, so this one. <laughs> I'll, just, yeah. I'll just write another letter. No. <laughs> Make it very angry and in all caps. Right. No, so this one, when Except I actually for did, select words that you want to emphasize and then have those in just lowercase. All lowercase, yes. <laughs> just complete reverse psychology on it. Um, so this one, what I did is I actually pinned my tracks, or I pinned empties to my tracks, and then baked that motion onto there, so then I could actually animate it by hand. And then I created offset empties as well. Because the corners, you can't really see it. There's, there is actually X's drawn in the corners of these things, and once it's been recompressed and exported, you can't see it. But <laughs> <laughs> so I did actually have something to track, but more can I do. But yeah, so like right here, for this area, in right in this section of the shot, I could use the corner tracker and work fine. But then I'm down to two corners. Right. So having to do this section by hand, that was a really interesting thing. Should have put more on it. Uh, I should have, yes. <laughs> Did you comp that in Blender too? Was this shot entirely oh, yeah. Blender? This shot is entirely Blender. <laughs> that <laughs> after. Huh? It's a very that realistic after. person you've made. Yes, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, was, um, I recomped this for this reel, but the original one, it was really interesting. So in this particular one that you're looking at right now, one thing that I did is I took, I mean, there's a lot of green in this shot, right? So one thing that I had to do is I took the 3D object that is the user interface, and I used a, a dilate, uh, dilate the road node to push that out further. So I'm actually only keying a few pixels around this because there's a section where right now this particular uh, key, the keying node, the settings that I'm using right here don't work as well later in the shot when he when it goes behind his body because of the the motion blur of his jacket or of his sweater it didn't key right so I had to actually animate the settings and I noticed after a while when I was keying the whole thing and trying to do that that because of my color spell settings this mannequin actually changed color over the course of the shot <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was interesting great. and then all the other stuff there was a bunch of other things that went wrong um, with it, so I ended up, it was quite amusing, but one little trick that I learned with this shot, if you're doing any sort of green screen keying and you have other green elements that aren't going to impact the shot overall, but they're still going to create holes in your plate, take your original plate, key it, and then do an alpha, like, key it, add your effect, and then use an alpha overnote on top of the original plate again so that it fills those holes that have been created from the original key. And then if you can, uh -huh. use a dilate for Dig it. Also using masking and dilate and road to really narrow down exactly where the key is definitely going to help you out. So, there is that. And then up and coming, actually go to my email here. I am starting on to creating a video tutorial series 
Yes, character creation. Ooh, GameStop power up there. Yup. All the emails. This guy. Just email this guy. Um, uh, really cool artist. I always kick around on Deviant Art and just like try to get inspiration because I can't draw to save my life. Um, so I'm going to be doing a character creation tutorial on this rhino here. So he's going to be a, a lot of fun. So I'm starting on that. Um, probably going to use you guys as my guinea pigs if you go, if you don't mind. So in a yes. month or two, hopefully by then I'll have it actually done, do it. and I'll bring it in for you guys to take a look at and give me critiques on my presentation because I'm terrible. But this so is. They're going to be doing what Nathan did. Huh? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Taking cues off the bat. Or the worst. Yeah. I think I, yeah. <laughs> Wait. A so this is what I've got after yourself. only an hour of uh, sculpting. Kind of started off and look at that greener trophy in there. Solid. Going over some some interesting techniques that I don't really see done too often. So you'll notice he doesn't have hands, and this particular model will never have hands on it directly. I won't be sculpting the hands directly onto this. So I'm going to use some kit bashing techniques where I'm actually going to sculpt the hands as a separate object so that I don't change this guy, and then I'll be booleaning it onto And since I'm using dynamic topology anyways, I'll just smooth it out to put those on. So showing some interesting techniques of kind of isolating your workload so that you're not potentially messing things up if you end up with something you don't like. I always do that with faces because I want to have like a billion polygons for my face still. I do that with ears. Yeah. Um, I, I am notorious <laughs> for stealing make human ears and sticking them on my models. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. It's one of the few things that I really don't like modeling. And they're so, like for the most part, ears are not really that identifiable, especially on a CG character. So you can always just, once you have an ear, just keep yeah. using the same ear over and over. One of the interesting uh, because... character true of a bomb that you're going to Huh? You make caricature of Obama. You're going to need ears. Well, yeah, but you could take, you could take make human ears and just pull them out. Yeah, move them around and yeah. distort them. Yeah. One of the things that's definitely interesting about kind of a digital art workflow is that unlike with real sculpting, you can just keep duplicating things you've already made over and over again. So yeah. I, I know a lot of modelers <laughs> that basically have built up a library of different body parts that they've modeled. Yeah. That and then they just keep on, they just like adjust their proportions and do some additional sculpting for details and toss them on their characters on it. It's a is very efficient way to work. I think this is going to be old, the sculptors of the European oh, yeah, this, about, so this right now is about 63,000. You're going to topo? Yep. I'm going to be using uh, contours and uh, V-mesh. Hmm? Or we can any other people. What happened to the things is no. What's your, what's, uh, where, where are these tutorials? These tutorials are not existent yet. Um, I'm not... Plug! Done. Plug yourself. They are probably going to be just on my website initially. Um, I'm going to be doing kind of a social experiment in the Blender world. So they're going to be by donation. And I'm trying to decide whether it's going to be truly, purely by donation, where it's just going to be there and there's going to be a donation box to the side, or whether it's like you have to donate at least 50 cents to download them. Um, but I'm going to be accepting both Bitcoin and PayPal. So, I'm, I'm really curious to see how much Bitcoin takes off. <laughs> have you, uh, uh, how about yeah. an exchange instead of uh, I'm, I'm up for whatever. I don't really care. I mean, I really just kind of want to see. I want to test the market. I want to test the market, and as of right now, anybody who's charging anything, even if you know, by donation or structured fee base, it's all just cash credit card. And so, I'm going to attempt to ride a little bit of publicity wave from being the first guy to accept Bitcoin yeah. as payment for tutorial series. Richard Sherman, yeah. the Seahawk, uh, changed his website so you can buy Richard Sherman merchandise with Bitcoin. Nice. Which is pretty uh, pretty daring for uh, a public figure of the NFL world. There is a food truck that goes over and back yeah. the cheese wizards. I bought a good yeah. cheese sandwich with Bitcoin the other day. It was pretty <laughs> amazing. <laughs> but well, you, can, uh, nice. you can just exchange it into, like, uh, you might want to think about like contacting the humble bundle people. Yeah. Like if you could get a widget and they like I think they take like ten percent but they handle the file services. Oh okay. And they 
you can like you, they do the processing of the money too. Yeah. And I think they they accept Bitcoin for things at, at, on their store. So. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, after, after you guys, I'll take a look at it and tell me that it's complete crap, and I'll probably just give it away for free. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have to do to get people to give stuff away for free. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> tell me the price is twenty. Everything sucks. <laughs> yeah, people already do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's an interesting he character. He's awesome. He, he is awesome. I've been reading a lot of uh, um, price passion about the Nature Academy lately, and it brings up an interesting quandary. Is really when you know something, it doesn't matter how you learned it, you can teach it. And well, really, if you if you can teach it, if you can actually teach it. Um, so he's really interesting because he can always just pull stuff, pull stuff off and he does a really, really good job. But in each one, he's like, yeah, I just learned this yesterday. I figured I'd put up a tutorial yeah. about it. There, there's some, <laughs> yeah, there's he, some tutorial of his where he's like, Mike Pan just told me how to do this. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, he does it for when he did the... <laughs> like, he doesn't do, like, he doesn't know things before he does things, really. He's yeah. like... You gave me, I, you know, you said you wanted to learn motion tracking, and I just learned that because you told me to. Yeah. Uh, let's take another 10 minute break. When we get back, Dean, they're on the gauntlet of showing things. I'm looking forward to this. And things will be shown. No pressure. People have not tried it, they just blurred it out. When you try it, it doesn't work. Oh, also, I brought my sketchbook. Oops. Oh, it's like that. Uh, uh, I want to Hey, uh, Nathan, can you hand me my cup? Can you demonstrate that curve? Yeah. 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 Yeah.